again. Today we're going to look at some counting tricks. But first, check this out. Which is bigger? This array of five rows of four cookies or this array of four rows of five cookies? Isn't this just the same as this? So four times five is the same as five times four, which is the same as four times five, which is the same as five times four, which is the same as four times five, which is the same as five times four, which is the same as four times five, which is the same as five times five, which is the same as five times five, which is the same as five times five, Okay, I think you've got it. This is the commutative property. That tells us we can rearrange the numbers in multiplication. If your problem is seven times three, you could make that seven rows of three, or you could make it three rows of seven. They will both equal the same answer, 21. So based on the commutative property, which of these answers is true? That's right, two rows of three is the same as three rows of two. Uh-oh. Okay, now that we've got that down, let's take a look at this. Don't worry, this one won't start spinning, I think. We've got an unshaded array here, and I want to represent five times four. So how many rows in this array would I need to shade? Great, each of these rows is made up of four. So I'll shade five rows. Now we have five rows of four, five times four. One more order? Okay, now I want to represent five times four in parentheses plus one times four. Well, I don't want to throw away a perfectly good array. Why don't we represent it here? I want to box in an array that would represent this. How should I do that? Great, we have five times four here already. So we need to box in this shaded area plus one more row of four. Now the boxed area represents five times four plus one times four. But what's another simpler way we could write this? Fabulous. This boxed area has six rows of four. So six times four. And what is six times four? Great. Six times four is 24. But look at this. A moment ago, we wrote this as five times four plus one times four. Let's solve it that way. How would we do that? So we have five times four equals 20, and one times four equals four, and 20 plus four equals 24. Wait, that's the same. Five times four plus one times four was the same as six times four, and five plus one equals six. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's take a look at another one. Look at the shaded area. What equation are we solving? I have eight rows of four parts, eight times four. Now let's remember how we broke down our last problem into two smaller parts. How can we break apart eight groups of four? I know the five times tables are easy for me. So let's take five rows of four here. And then we're left with three rows of four. So five times four plus three times four. But look at this. Since both of these are representing groups of four, I can also write this as five plus three in parentheses times four. How do you know this is true? Since the size of the groups is four, we can multiply this four by the total number of groups. This is the distributive property because the outside number distributes to everything inside the parentheses. So what is five times four? And then what is three times four? Great, five times four is 20. Then 
3 times 4 is 12, and 20 plus 12 equals 32. 8 groups of 4 is 32. I want you to answer this last problem. In class, you'll be looking at more problems where you'll have the chance to break the equation into simpler parts. Great thinking.